This example problem deals with reaction mechanisms, and it's going to be one of the more challenging examples that we do because we're going to have to apply the pre-equilibrium approximation. So in this problem, we're given the overall reaction, and we're given a reaction mechanism. Furthermore, we're told what the rate law is for the overall reaction. We're told that it's first order in CHCl3, and it's one half order in Cl2. So we can write down the rate law for the reaction based on that information. So we know that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of CHCl3 to the first power and the concentration of Cl2 to the one-half power. All right, and then we're asked, is the reaction mechanism that we're given consistent with this rate law? And so if we're given a reaction mechanism, we can determine what rate law that reaction mechanism would predict. And so we needed to do that and see does it match what we were given experimentally. So to determine the rate law based on a mechanism, we need to find the slowest or the rate determining step. And based on the information that they give us here, we know that the second step is the slow step or the rate determining step. So if I have a reaction mechanism and I know that they're elementary steps, then I can rate the rate law for each of those elementary steps. And the rate law for the rate determining step is going to be the same as the rate law for the overall reaction. And so step two is our rate determining step, so we're going to write down the rate law for that step. So I know that for step two, the rate law is rate is equal to K2 times the concentration of Cl to the first power, because the coefficient in the equation is 1, and times the concentration of CH Cl3. Now, obviously, the rate law for the second step does not match the experimentally determined rate law, but chlorine is an intermediate because it appears both in the products and in the reactants, and it doesn't appear in the overall chemical equation. So we don't want it to appear in our rate law. So this is why we have to apply the pre-equilibrium approximation. This approximation works when I have one or more fast steps followed by the slow rate determining step. What that means is the steps before the rate determining step are going to come into equilibrium. So that means the rate of the forward reaction will be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down the rate law for the forward and reverse steps and set those equal to each other. Now remember the whole reason we're doing this is because we want another expression for this intermediate so that we can get it out of our rate law. So, step one is going to be in equilibrium. And so I'm going to write the rate law for the forward reaction, and that is that rate, I'm going to call this K1 times the concentration of Cl2. Right, so this is for the forward. For the reverse reaction, we have that rate is equal to K minus 1 times concentration of Cl squared. All right, And so, if this first step has come into equilibrium, then I can set the rate law for the forward reaction equal to the rate law for the reverse reaction. Let me go on to the next slide so I can have some more. So if I set the forward reaction, K1 times concentration of Cl2 is equal to K minus 1 times concentration of Cl squared. So my goal is to solve for the concentration of Cl, so I'll first divide both sides by K minus 1. So that means I'm going to have Cl squared is equal to K1 over K minus 1 times concentration of Cl2. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to have Cl is equal to K1 over K minus 1 to the 1 half power and Cl2 to the 1 half power. Alright, so now we're going to take our expression for Cl and plug it back into the rate law for step two. So what that's going to look like then is that the rate of step two 
because this is the rate determining step, it's also the rate law for the overreaction is equal to K2 times K1 over K minus 1 to the 1 half power times the concentration of Cl2 to the 1 half times concentration of CH Cl3. Now, this mess out in front is all just a bunch of rate constants that we haven't determined yet. So I'm just going to collect all of these together into a single rate constant that I'm going to call K. So I'm going to rewrite that as rate is equal to K times concentration of Cl2 to the 1 half times concentration of CH Cl3. And so this is consistent with the experimentally determined rate law where they told us that it's first order in CHCl3 and it's one half order in Cl2. So we have shown that this mechanism is consistent with the experimentally determined rate law.